Well, g'day. Glav here. Welcome back to Glav Swirl. If you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button, that like button, that bell button as well, eh? I told you on the last video rant that that would be my last rant and the next video would actually be a ride video. What can I say? I lied. Hey, I'm broken. If you need someone who cares, then I suggest you call Lifeline or perhaps your therapist. Seriously now, I've done this video as a direct follow-up to the last one. It's pertinent to what I ranted about. I also thought that I'd let you know that I actually wrote to the Managing Director of Harley Davidson Asia. This bloke's responsible for all of Asia, including Australia and New Zealand. I wrote to him with two issues. The one that I spoke about in the last video, as in the issue with my um, CBA and also a minor one with a cock-up that Harley had with my two HOG memberships. The guy came back to me almost immediately and said he'd look into both and his underlings actually got my HOG issue fixed quick smart. However, not surprisingly, I have not heard back to him or from him in regards to Harley Davidson living up to fixing their warranty problems. Hey, what can I say? Now, in terms of the pricing you're about to see, it's between the two American V-Twins. I just can't imagine riding anything else myself. So therefore, it's between Harley-Davidson and Indian. Uh, the two products I looked at was the Harley-Davidson Road Glide Special and also the Indian Challenger Limited. For those of you, no, those of you in bike world, you'd know they are very two very similar products. The process was between just one Harley-Davidson dealer, that being my existing Harley-Davidson dealer, who I did like, and two Indian dealers. As it turned out, one of the Indian dealers was professional and fantastic, and the other one, unfortunately my local one, was next to friggin' useless. Initially I couldn't even get a quote out of, the blo out, out of that dealership. This is not a negotiation skills video. If you want a negotiation skills video, go and watch someone else on YouTube. There's heaps of that crap around. What this is about was the final pricing outcome between the two products. The outcome where I was happy to purchase at. The next section you're about to see is actually a detailed pricing comparison between the two. The numbers are taken directly off written quotes, which I had on both. And at the end of the video, I will also add some other intangible stuff which provides more food for thought and perhaps more problems for Harley. And yes, I promise you, the next video won't be another rant. It will be an actual ride video. So, having said all that, let's get on with it. So, if we start off on our pricing table with the actual raw bike price itself, which is this highlighted area up here, you'll see that the Indian price, and this is after considerable negotiation with both sets of dealers. So the Indian price for the raw bike on the road was just over $37,100, and Harley was about 300 bucks cheaper at 36,800. But this is really only just where the story begins. So let's work down the list. If we go to the next item, which is the driver's backrest, you'll see here that the Indian, 752 Aussie dollars, and in Harley's case, 400 bucks for a genuine Harley one. The Harley one was significantly cheaper. The next item down that I wanted was highway pegs, so I elected to put a genuine set of Indian pegs on at 387, or on the Harley, I choose Kiriakin at 285, because frankly, they're a pretty good set of pegs that I've run on my other bikes. If I look at the sissy bar, um, I had no choice but to put a genuine Indian on the Indian and I talk about gouger, $1,442 which includes the backrest, everything else and in Harley's case $900 so Harley comes up trumps again. Now I do a lot of riding and the next item down is a touring seat. Um, the Harley dealer was going to put a sundowner on for me and that was going to be thrown in. And in the end, after riding the Indian, I have ordered an Indian extended reach seat, which is $705. In terms of the air cleaner, 
I put a genuine Indian air cleaner in that was 608 bucks, and in Harley's case, it was $550. Crash bars on the Indian, they came standard, and on the Harley, they come standard. Heated grips, uh, I ended up getting the uh, dealer and the Indian dealer to throw them in, but their price was about $300. But look at Harley, 600 bucks. Why is that? Is because it's not only the heated grips, it's all the cabling that has to come with the Harley. Harley cabling comes with nothing, where in the Indian's case, everything's already wired up and all you've got to do is fit the grips on and plug them in. The next big item down is the exhaust. I like TAB performance exhaust. In the Indian's case, it gets penalised here a lot more money because in Indian's case, I elected to put a uh, cat converter delete in as well as the slip-ons, which brought the price up to $1,575. But in, and in the case of Harley, all you've got to do is put a new set of slip-ons on because when you take the standard Harley pipes off, the catalytic converter goes with them. The next one's interesting, the handlebars. Um, I've ordered a set of KST out of J&P Cycles in the States. $525 Aussie arrived here. Um, the good thing about those is, once again, the Indian comes already with enough cables, everything. You don't have to buy anything else other than the bars, where in the Harley's case, all the cables have to be changed, brake lines, the whole friggin' lot which turns out to be a very expensive exercise. And this number over here, the 1500 bucks, does include dealer labour as well. And being fair to Harley on this, this number, 525, is my labour, so it goes in at zero cost. Now, next one's interesting. If we look at these next two line items with the suspension, the Indian comes with inverted front forks and comes with a Fox rear shock as standard. Now, I've got to tell you, that bike, that Indian, is beautiful to ride. It just soaks up the road. It's not soft, but it's just beautiful, well-thought-out suspension. To get the suspension right on the Harley, um, uh, I use progressive stuff. Now, let's go to the rear first. Um, I've allowed $600 out. I already have a set of good progressive um, springs that I took off another bike, but that's the price I actually could sell those springs for. Is 600 bucks for the replacement, they're about 800. And the dealer openly admits that I'll need to do the front end, uh, the suspension that most guys within 10,000 Ks change the front suspension on that road glide. <laughs> Go figure. Next item down the windscreen, of course, the uh, Indian comes with a uh, motorized windscreen, and the Harley does not, it just comes with a fixed windscreen. And I've been advised that I'll need to change that out pretty quickly because on the uh, road glide, you get a fair amount of buffeting, apparently, as advised by the dealer, and that I'd want to change that out. So from J&P, 300 bucks. Next item, down labour. The Indian dealer had an extra 250 bucks, where in terms of Harley, that labour price was included in the items above. Next item, down cam and tuna. You can see there... No cam and tuna on the Indian. It doesn't need it. I've got to tell you, it, it goes like a cut cat. But in terms of the Harley with the 114, need is both a cam and a tuna there. And I can tell you, I have a 114 with a cam and tuna. They go very, very well. But comparing the two bikes, you need to put that on the Harley just to bring it up to the same sort of power and spec that the Indian comes standard with. Um, i got to tell you that that Indian, well, and remembering I've got air cleaner and pipes on it, uh, to, use, to say something a bit crass, it pulls as hard as a 13-year-old boy that's just hit puberty and discovered masturbation. God, it goes hard. Anyway, the final prices. On the Indian, 43362 and on the Harley, 45669 That is a pricing difference of $2,307. The Harley's more expensive by $2,300. And I'll outlay for you shortly uh, the spec differences, which hasn't been accounted for in that price difference. If you remember from my last video, I said straight out that if Harley had treated me right, 
Um, I wouldn't have actually even considered this $2,300. I would have just ignored it. But given they didn't, uh, this is the price that we pay. Or should I say, Harley had paid. The bike comes standard with Brembo brakes fitted. I don't know how much value you put on safety, but um, this is one I actually really like. Another one of the intangibles, I call it an intangible, is the way that Indian has the dash layout set up, which is the exact inverse to what um, Harley has. Harley has their two dials down here and have then placed their screen up above it. Why they did that is because the two dials are already engineered there and had been there for the last 20 years on that bike and it was just cheaper um, to put the new screen, um, their boom box as they call it, above the dials. But unfortunately, if you sit on that road guide, and I have, that new screen is very hard to reach. Um, it's very ergonomically unpleasing. Let's just say that. Some of the other little bits and pieces that, um, that uh, you may want to consider is look at the quality of these mirrors. These would be an aftermarket item for Harley, where Harley comes fitted with the uh, nasty cheap stuff. The bike comes standard with a 100 watt stereo. I'm not sure the exact rating of the uh, Road Glide Special, but I'm pretty sure in saying it ain't nothing like that. Um, it's a damn sight short, this stereo is awesome. Also, if you have a look at these levers, look at the size of them and the quality of the chrome. But here's the thing you really want to notice, adjustable levers. If you want to adjust levers, a mate of mine's just done it on his heritage. He had to buy a set that was over $300 out of the UK. This comes standard with that. The bike comes standard with two of these uh, glove boxes, which is handy. I don't know what the um, what the uh, road guide has on it, to be frank. So, all in all, there's a lot of stuff on this bike that I've taken for granted that you may wish to consider. Oh, and I forgot, I haven't costed in the LED lights which come standard on the Indian. These are uh, the front light and side lights all LED where on the road glide that's another cost of replacement if you have to if you wish to go from the standard lights to the LED lights. Another item um, of point of difference is you can see that windscreen coming up there electrically so you can on the Indian move your windscreen up and down I love this feature, I use it all the time. I used to have a Chieftain many years ago, it had that same feature and it's just great when you want the air blowing on you, you drop the windscreen. When you want to protect yourself from the elements, you increase the uh, windscreen. Just fantastic. Love this bit. So at the end of the day for me, with the bike fitted up the way I personally needed to have it fitted up, there was a 2300 buck difference. The Indian had more features, I considered what was going to be the ongoing support in the history of the Harley. But having said all that, at the end of the day, it really just comes back to personal preference.